It's a bit windy today. Let's want to see what it does in real sunlight. I think it's it's too much. I think we're going to end up breaking it. All right, here it is sitting on my dresser in my messy room. There's some pretty good amount of sunlight hitting that blind, but all the blinds are closed in here and it's just putting along. So, pretty cool. There's always going to be here. All right, there it is sitting in the cabinet. Receiving ambient video. light from over there. I'm making a video. So really the only light that's coming in are those right there. And it's just enough light. Just enough to keep it going. Pretty impressive. And of course, with the ambient light coming in, you can obviously see the shadow back there. It's been pretty good. Just a cruising. It's a little after 8 in the morning. You can see the shadow being casted. The thing is just spinning away cooking all right it's still late in the morning the sun's actually shining in this way but the reflected light coming in is still enough to power this thing you can see there's a tiny shadow back here that's all you need sweet I got it. Well, it's going very fast. Yeah. Push the butterfly button. It's cool. It's cool. You like it? Yeah. It smells disgusting when there's when fire on it. That? Hey! It smells disgusting. All right, so the sun is too much, but if it's in the shade that the magnet is blocking the sun, then it still works pretty well. Right there it is cooking. I'm almost afraid it's going to break itself, it's going so fast. Sun coming in at that angle. Thing is moving. That's about the only way it can stay in the sun.
it's hard to tell exactly how fast it's moving, but it is cooking. Look at that. That's a cool shot. All right, so all right, so here it is. This is the little guy. This is just a test tube with the little sticks, skewer sticks that's been cut, super glued, and photovaic cells which have been glued. These are actually two totally separate cells here uh, connected together in series to give me a slightly higher voltage. So that makes a panel. That's the other panel. That's for one coil. The same over here for the other coil. So I actually did tie. Uh, each one of these with small wire because it's just that small. Um, it, it wanted to bend out and it, it just needs to be tied down. So here's an example of how small the wire is. Um, the green wire you see there is about, mm, I don't know, I think it's about 40 AWG. So you can see how small that, that small wire it is. Tiny little thing. So yeah, it works really well. It did not turn out the way I imagined it but it works a hundred times better cool alright so this is an original mason jar a ball mason jar and I've just epoxied that big magnet and the rod in there with the needle point now I actually had a different needle on there but I ended up putting this bigger fatter needle on there because the small one actually the tip actually bent over and was causing me a lot of friction problems it's kinda crazy that it was that bad but it really was so I found out that these ferrite magnets have an extended magnetic field versus the neodymium so I'm using this big block ferrite because I believe the field is actually better for this type of application so cool alright Let's put this little guy in there. Oh. Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com here. Pulse Motor Build of 2016. So check it out. Why are you sitting in the dark? Well, my pulse motor runs off of this candle. So let's light it. Ta-da! And away we go. It totally works. Let's move it closer just to speed it up. Let's just see how fast it'll go on a candle. That's pretty good. So what are you looking at? This is a Mandino, Mancino, a Mancino motor. It's basically a couple of solar panels and some wire. I uh, spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make this work with magnetic bearings, but I wanted zero touching anything. So I tried bismuth and this and that and smashed things and broke stuff. And high powerful magnets and test tubes are not the best idea to do together. But anyway, it's running like a champ. So let's have a closer look at it, see how it is. Okay, so there it is. It is sitting in a ball jar, an original ball jar. So it's basically some very super fine magnet wire. You can actually see how small the stuff is down there. There's a green wire, which is bigger, and then there's a smaller wire. That's the wire that runs around the whole thing. So if I light this lighter, it should take off, or not. Oh, there it goes. So anyway, this is a super sensitive device, and uh, it seems to work pretty well. It's pretty cool. Alright guys, so here it is. It's about 15-16 uh, inches away from the candle and still turning. So briefly, how this works is it's basically a commutator through the solar cells. So one goes one way, one goes the other way, and they just go back and forth 
um, commutating the uh, light coming in. So basically the solar cells are just all shorted together and then the, depending on how the light hit is, hits it, it's going to turn according to the electromagnetic forces generated on the coil. So it's pretty pretty neat, pretty cool idea. And I didn't expect this to run from a candle, but it does. And a matter of fact, if you put it in direct sunlight, it just goes ballistic. So that's bad. What's up, everybody? So I'm just chilling here, working today, and I thought I'd shoot this short film. Got the OSD here. Going to be working on it hopefully sometime soon. I got some milling to do on the aluminum and stuff. But in the meantime, this little guy is still working really well. I had a little mishap. I had it in the sun and it busted one of the arms off and then two of the arms off and all the wires were frayed. So I ended up putting it back together and it works a lot better even now. Cleaned off the all of the uh, I cleaned off the solar cells and the glass tube with some uh, acetone. Made them a little bit better. Sitting there next to the uh, old uh, original pulse motor build off motor and the levitator kit. So anyway, just the ambient light in this room, which is just these lights on the ceiling here. Um, this little guy is just happily running back there. Pretty cool. I mean, they just sit there and run all day long in that mason jar. It's pretty, pretty good speed, really. So what I want to try to do is I have this, uh, I have this three watt torch. Most of you call them three watt flashlight. So what I want to do is I want to shine it from about here, which is about 10 feet or so. I want to shine it on there and see if it picks up speed. I got to hold the camera steady. You ready? So there it goes, picking up speed. Pretty cool. Ah, sorry. Anyway, I'm almost wondering if I can get the thing to spin with the lights completely off from across the room, so I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> this thing's pretty cool. Alright, in case you're wondering what happens when I'm like right in front of it. Pretty well goes ballistic. As long as it don't start hitting, it's good, but as soon as it starts wobbling, that's a problem. You can see the bottom is pretty well centered, but the top is like very wobbly. It's very interesting. It's like self-balancing. Anyway, it doesn't go Come here, throw your hand. Walk over here. Leave that thing alone. Stay right there. Stay there.
Pulse Motor Build-Off 2016. Cooperation through competition. Brought to you by rwgresearch.com, open-source-energy.org, and people like you.